Mission 5, Catch Up. Welcome to Gatwick Airport. This service is done in Victoria has fallen behind its schedule. Keep the speed limits and watch for signals and try to get back to lost time. So hey there, Joya here, and welcome back to Oscar's Trace World 2, welcome back to Rush Hour, and welcome back to the Commuter. We find ourselves here at Gatwick, so we will open all our passengers to board. And we are slightly behind schedule, as the mission suggests, and we now need to get ourselves to London within about 30 minutes. So it's going to be a bit of a fast-paced schedule, this one, aka <laughs> max throttle all the way. But hopefully, we'll be able to keep to speed limits, keep to times, and just make sure that our train gets back to London without too much of a delay. From what I gather, the train is already set up, so lights are set. Yes, they are. That is a set. Marty uh, reverses in neutral, so that's to forward. Leave the brakes. Not an emergency, perhaps. <laughs> And that should be fine. Close the doors and let's get ready to depart. Got a green signal, so we have to place the parts. Supply power, and let's get going. We have to look at the uh, time stamp for us. We need to arrive at Victoria at 7.55, so we're looking at about 25 minutes to travel about 25 miles. So it's not impossible for us. Just we have to play a bit of catch up with the uh, last part of the service. 7.30 in the morning, so it is rush hour period. But being a Gatek service, it just means we'll be running express through the rest of the routes. See the uh, line light flash on the lower left there, that's just because we're going through a set of points and there's no third rail. That should be up again very shortly. I must say, I have really been enjoying this uh, route so far. The missions, the scenarios, the scenery, it's come across very nicely. And so, fair play, Dovetail, you've produced honestly one of your better routes in recent times. I must say, the frame rate too, has been a small patch since uh, recording some of the first scenarios. The frame rate has been absolutely fantastic as well today, no complaints for that. The droppings, for the most part, didn't sort it out. We're still getting solid 60 from the uh, front end, you see, are about 58, 59. And it's just the sound. I mean, listen, wh when these trains are at high speeds, there's a little... I want to call it a whine, like a, a murmur going at high speed. It sounds excellent in this. It honestly, puts me in a position of an electrical train going at high speed. Which I uh, I do do from time to time. So as we reach speed 90 miles per hour, we need to be aware that we have to go down to 80 in about 2 miles. That will be where we hit the junction to uh, hit the quarry lines. From the quarry lines we'll then be able to continue on at speed towards, uh, whoops, towards South Croydon. There's a platform just there. Just reset that camera, there we go. Um, yes, yeah, so there's a platform, well, sorry, quarry junctions, quarry junctions towards South Croydon, South Croydon to East Croydon, but well, we're not stopping, just going via location at East Croydon, and just to watch the speed express this time as we arrive. We'll cut the throttle now as we hit 89 miles per hour, and at this point we'll just let the train naturally gain and do speed. Good now we need to drop down to 80 in a mile anyway, just have the train to do it all by itself. Air car sets. Two three eight sevens attached in the middle. It's all stuff we've uh, we've done before. 
Well, see a 377 on the left there, also driving at speed. So we're at 80, I'm just now waiting for a set of points, there we go, and as soon as we clear the quarry, uh, the junction of the quarry line, enter the tunnel, and back up to full throttle again. There's a 90, and let's increase the throttle. Yeah, they're very easy trains to drive, the uh, electric stars. Very easy trains to drive. Sold on Mars Controller, so you're not really doing too much in terms of uh, brake operation, apart from just using the same lever. Essentially, all you're doing from a driving perspective, apart from making sure that the ADOS is active, there we go, just realised that I don't have to turn on. Um, yeah, so all you're doing really from a driving perspective is just keep an eye out in front of you, make sure there's no obstruction on the lines, check the signals, green aspects. Man, there's some quite. Oh, uh, yeah, on the other line, there's a few trains in relative close uh, concession between one another. It's like train, signal, train, Signal, which is like a single yellow aspect at that point. <laughs> okay, imagine it's around the corner, probably like another service is popping around. But the Aonis scenario is actually rather smart because they're not kind of your normal timetable trains going from A to B, stopping every station, but rather they all have a set destination. And the way that the scenario is done, because again, you're driving a train, a lot of driving trains down to timing, so you'll be at th there, you go, another train. And so these trains, I can imagine in terms of how they're coded, they're not stopping at stations, or rather they're just going to a destination that's X amount of miles away. Because you, if you're travelling to like, if you're travelling at the correct speeds, travelling towards the correct um, signals at the correct times and all that, essentially all you've got to do is schedule the train to pass at a particular time. So we're scheduled to arrive at, East, at um, Victoria at 7.55. And therefore, all you need is a train every like five minutes. You have one train starts at East Croydon, one train starts at Purley, one starts at Purley, so another train there. So you have a train at every station, and then they're scheduled to just go express stop at whatever station that it works at in terms of keeping it auto schedule. It's smart. It's what I did when I did my uh, Thames Inc. stream a little while ago on trains to between uh, Brighton and Bedford. So I'd spawn my own train in, of course. And then rather than having AI trains that stop at every single station, rather, you time it. So when I'm expecting to be at London Bridge, for example, I'll have those passing by. When I'm expecting to be at Luton, I'll have those passing by. So forth, so forth. That way you can keep it, keep it busy and have the illusion there. For example, well, right there, another train. Every single signal block <laughs> seems to have a train at it. And it, it helps. It's more service, more variety, more AI. And essentially, rush hour, it just gives you an idea of how busy this line is. But the main line, one of the busiest in the world. Uh, bleed off a tiny bit of speed there. So just crossed over the uh, Brighton Melon again. Also, road distance. Actually, down below, spot there's a train there, held at a red signal. Where are you, Service Ghost? You're also on to a uh, London Victoria travelling at Cordeson South, Purley, Purley Oaks, East, uh, South Croydon, East Croydon, so that service is stopping at all the stations. There you go. No train down at a reds. So, busy old line this. There's a lot to keep an eye out for. Yeah, 
Yeah, it's quite a, well, it's not really a steep downhill section, but the speed does start to uh, start to run away from you if you don't maintain it properly. And the Brighton main line on the left, very shortly, will be merging once again back to it. And again, this downhill descent it levels off again once we reach uh, South Croydon. So just go through South, we merge, go through South Croydon, and then just at the junction just in front of East Croydon Station, immediately before it, that's when we do uh, return back to level tracks. So it's only a steep, it's only a, it's only a steep, it's only a shallow little descent. I must admit, interesting that we're going inland as opposed to going towards the coast. They're still descending, but if you look at if you look at the um, area on a map, so around Brighton, not Brighton, if you look around, say, Gatwick, Red Hill, Hale's Heath, it's a relatively highish land. The uh, south of England. Not like hills and mountains, but it gets a bit. It gets up. It, go, it goes up. It goes down again. US down to 60. So release the brakes. Let's apply to high a bit more again. There you go, that'll do. 59, that will slowly increase up to 60 by the time we get towards East Croydon. But it just allows us to go at a nice shallow pace into the uh, approach to the station. There's South Croydon. Signal points in that we are going to take a junction turn to the left. We go down to 30 miles per hour. Oh, quite on the roof. <laughs> there we go, that's more like it. So if I just stick our camera towards the end of the platform there. We've got eight miles to travel. We've got twelve minutes to travel, eight miles, so definitely possible if you do keep it at a constant sixty. Also, southern train that's part on the right hand side there. You'll be able to see it from the cab. Side cruise speed again, back up to 60. At this point, train's heading towards London Bridge, uh, Black London Bridge Blackfriars. Turn off to the right. Train's uh, heading towards Victoria and uh, what's the other main station on this line? It's uh, Clapham Junction, Charles Clapham Junction and Victoria. 
and then use this line here. Up to 70. Okay, about seven and a half miles to Victoria. Ten minutes to travel. And at 70 miles per hour, it means that we should get there very much on time. Very little on my delays on the way. Although, I can imagine that now we're in the brunt of the traffic. Especially as we approach Clapham Junction. Just need to be a little, little more careful with the signalling. Just keep an eye on what colours the aspects are. Just make sure that our speed is maintained and held. As you can see on the approach to Clapham Junction, all of a sudden, the right side, a lot of commuter trains, a lot of local services being held at aspects. In that case, that train has just been given the clearance, it's now accelerating. But you'll see a few trains held on the up and down slow lines. We're on the fast lines, <laughs> we're alright, we can just go at speed. But slow lines that you'll see trains start to uh, lose a bit of time. Passing through Norbury. Again, about a mile and a half, down to 60 miles per hour, and again, just slowly losing speed as we go through Clapham and start the approach into Victoria. Couple of line power cuts. Just reducing speed down to 60. That will do. Two miles down to forty five. 
just maintaining his speed. Keep trying going steady. <laughs> Got good memories of Captain Junction in the sim. Driving the, uh, was it 1 Romeo 17? The uh, Rygate to Victoria service. With the old HST passing through it. 14 past 11. I can tell you, it wasn't like this, isn't it? But I managed to spot two Great Western trains on that line that day. We had the Gatwick service at Rygate, ready for the reverse. And you had the HSC passing through Platform 9 on its way towards Reading. As uh, Waterloo is kind of the diversionary secondary terminus for Great Western, if Paddington's that service, it takes a lot longer to get to Reading via Waterloo and uh, Clapham. But it's the only really suitable terminus that's there for Great Western if they need to divert. I know that Euston trains use Marlebone. And so a little while ago you had a uh, Virgin train West Coast uh, HSTs and units passing through uh, what was it passing through? Yeah, they're passing through High Wycombe, they passing through High Wycombe to get into London via Marlebone. Well, that was a couple of years ago now. Very uh, long ago. It'd also be good if I uh, don't get speed limits there, going a bit too fast now. Um, yeah, so every kind of terminus has its own secondary terminus that they can divert to if need be. Although Chilton, I think Chilton, they also use um, West Ryslip every so often as well. So if they can't get trains to the Marlebone, they'll uh, cut services at West Ryslip because then they've got a connection to the central line. So people can just use the underground instead. It may only be two platforms, but certainly capable. The uh, signal thing is used to set points now, so make sure we're down to 40. Crawl along at 40 until we reach the entry point to Victoria Station. And it's down to 20, all the way to the buffers. West, dual yellow aspects. Reduce speed to 20. Sign tail of the US. Single yellow aspects. Now what we do is crawl into the end of platform. Let's see what number they give us today. Yeah, we are coins platform thirteen today. Right, just move my camera towards the nope, not seconds of window. Just wanna look at the top down kind of approach view.
Right, entering at 10. Just bring it to the platform. And pass some braking to stop. Doors release. And let us now shut the cab off and bridge out of service. Uh, thanks for stepping in. Let's see how you did. Okay, so, then you even set the train up. So we'll just turn it off. That comes off and jump out the train. Perfect. So, it took about 26 minutes to drive that service, drove 26 miles in that time, so about a minute a mile. Um, 4,016 points gets a god medal. With stop accuracy of 0.688 yards. Not bad, that. <laughs> Not bad at all. Uh, level 91 on the profile, level 8 on the line can be to level 5 on the 387. And overall, not a bad run in terms of speed limits as well. We just about kept everything without too many problems. So, uh, yeah, that brings us to the end of um, Catch Up. So you have one more scenario left to do. We have one more scenario. It's about 70 minutes in length, so definitely a long one. Takes us all the way from Brighton to London. But other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed the video today. Leave a like if you did. Do subscribe if you haven't done already. Thank you very much for tuning in. I'll see you again shortly for some more Trains and Mod action. Take care, guys. Have a good one, and bye-bye.